Avenue at Hartlepool. The English Martyrs School in Hartlepool in Northumberland. It's an area of the country where traditionally learning languages has not been popular. In 2004, GCSE French and German results here were low. Only 38% of students managed a grade A star to C. But a year later, with a full year group still taking a language, results were up more than 10%. And in 2008, with languages now optional, 84% achieved an A star to C. Four years ago, only 28% opted to take a language. In 2008, that had risen to 40%. So what's the school doing to get this level of success? I think we've really become a lot better at working out what kids need to do to get success in the exams. So whereas in the past we might have just been teaching various topics, we never really thought now is an opportunity to focus on a certain aspect of an exam. Everything we do now, we try and target some exam practice in it. Not so the kids think all the time, oh, this is for the exam, this is for the exam, but so that you put a certain spin on an activity. I still want some longer sentences. At the moment, if this was a GCSE exam, I can only give you a grade F. I can only give you a grade F. I can give you a grade C. Because you said je pense que you used an opinion phrase. If they're doing a reading exercise, you might pull out, oh, and this is a way that they sometimes trick you in an exam, or this is a little technique for an exam that you might be thinking about all the time, so that they don't only think about exams in the mock exam time or in the year of 10 exam time, that it's something that's a feature of all their lessons. When we're doing it this way, we're practicing our pronunciation all the way through, aren't we? Back in 2004, GCSE exam data revealed that the school's results had been particularly weak in the speaking test. From September 2004, with all Key Stage 4 classes, we introduced a 10-minute speaking focus in every lesson um, where we would f address one element of the speaking task, whether it was conversation or whether it was role play, but basically getting the students to become confident speakers of the foreign language. Je m'appelle Karine et j'ai 15 ans. Oui. On dit que je ressemble à ma grand-mère. We found that giving them confidence either simply by giving them something to read or by doing choral speaking practice, then you often found that they were less worried about speaking out in front of others. Um, and once they'd got the confidence, that helped them when they then went in to do an exam type speaking test. Tout le monde, je ressemble à ma mère, mais je ne le pense When you do when you're speaking, I think it's like yeah, you stutter a lot. If you like reading out loud to the class and things with everyone, it helps you remember. Think about including those more exciting things when you're answering your speaking questions. The text that I'd written, it included lots of really good things that they could then include in their speaking exam, uh, in their speaking answers. So the linking words, the opinions and so on, if they include things like that into their own GCSE preparation, they should get better marks. OK, la première ligne seulement, la première ligne. So what do I want her to do? La première ligne. The first line only, la première ligne. I give them vocabulary that I know they're very confident with and then I had them to work in pairs so I can wander about and still listen to what they're doing but they don't have the feeling that it's directly addressed to me. With people with a little bit more confidence I can have a one-to-one. -one. Uh, I pick people that I know don't care showing off a bit. Okay, Jonathan, tu as choisi? Il s'appelle David. No, il ne s'appelle pas. No, s'appelle pas David. 
Il s'appelle Marcel. Oui, il s'appelle Marcel. I think one problem that we perhaps had previously was that we focused a lot on the writing, the coursework element, because that was the area where pupils could see that they needed to do and what marks they needed to get, forgetting that that was only a quarter of their exam. Combien d'erreurs pouvez-vous trouver? And in... That's wrong. Yeah. Is that right? And in some time? Yeah, that's wrong. It should be, like, from time to time. Yeah. We're reading it and, like, we have to develop our basic, like, understanding and, and confidence in reading texts and being able to spot the mistakes in it and correct them to how they should be. So, when we're doing a listening task, what is it that helps you answer the questions? What do you do to try and answer the questions, Shri? Listen out for keywords. Keywords, well done. We felt that listening skills were something that, in the past, perhaps we'd assumed that pe pupils knew how to um, do the tasks that they're expected to complete for an exam. And then we realised that, well, sometimes they weren't really thinking about how they could achieve the best possible marks, so we started focusing on exam technique. Encouraging pupils to think about how they listen, what kind of things they can be listening for, whether it's key vocabulary, whether it's word association, and when they see questions on the exam paper, making them think, well, what kind of words might I be listening for, so that they're much more conscious about what they want to try and extract from the, the dialogue on the, the tape. Anna and Peter reden über ihre Freizeit. Trage entweder Anna oder Peter ein. Improvements in performance at GCSE are also attributed to better use of ICT in the classroom. Now I think we've really got a great bank of resources um, and a great bank of ICT equipment. If somebody has already done the groundwork preparing a flip chart on something, um, it's much easier to share resources around. I'm going to give you all one of these handsets, OK, to make the test a little bit easier today. All right? We have a, a system called ActiVote, which is just like using handsets on who wants to be a millionaire. It's a quiz where students have multiple choice answers, and they all have a handset to input their own answer. En général, Paul est gentil, gentil, gentil. OK, read it. Ali, off you go. So see your number light up. <laughs> okay, and stop. See the answer? Ooh. Très bien. 87% of you, 20 of you got it right. Well done. <laughs> Three people got it wrong. Okay. Paul A. Gentil. Somebody who got it right, put their hand up and tell me why that was the correct answer, Charlotte. Because if it was B, then it would have been a girl, because it had the e Brilliant. Mm. Absolutely brilliant. OK. The lessons are, f <laughs> are made fun by the active votes machines where we get to do a test like that. It's just something that you can use to learn in a fun way. Like, you get quizzes or you might get tests to, like, test you on what you've learned. International Week this week in school. So an international theme to lessons, to things going on after school, food, all that sort of thing. Special events that introduce an international perspective help students develop a positive attitude to learning languages. And every year more students here are choosing a language as a GCSE option. We did want to think about what we were doing to enhance the global dimension in school because we feel that if our students are more globally aware that make, might make them more aware of the need to have some language skills. In Hartlepool students are not always aware of people speaking another language. Pupils in this area, some of them do go abroad on holiday but it tends to be a package holiday where they're in a complex and they may be abroad but they are not aware that they're in a, an area where people do not speak English. Uh, when we take them to France or to Germany, they've got to try their best to communicate. Last year I went to Germany and uh, went to the Christmas market. 
and you can talk to the people around there and try and use German. Yeah, I've been to France and it was like my first time and it was really good and I really enjoyed it. We went to a snail farm, we went to an aquarium there and we've done some activities. We've had a day at the local football club where the activities are focused around football and that is designed to encourage and engage Year 9 boys particularly. We went on the football club and we had um, loads of activities that was with our French and uh, I thought it was good because like, it was around the pitch and since how we all support Arkville United, like, it got us really motivated and that do it. It wasn't like lesson activity, it was like more interactive and more fun. We've done Enterprise in Any Language for Year 9, 10 pupils, where they produce materials for Key Stage 2 pupils and then actually use those materials to teach elements of language to the primary school children. And that was really good for us because it, it got us to see that some stuff that we can use later on, that how French can be applied into, into real life, like in the business world and stuff, and how it's not just useful if you want to be a French teacher or something, so that definitely encouraged me to take it on further. What we did recently was the European Day Languages, which was, we just did like a mixture of music and French, where we made like a song in French, and we had to do like a competition against other schools. As a specialist arts college, we have done a, a cartoon project, Art and French. Sometimes it's the artist who is not particularly keen on languages, but they then become involved in the language through the, the art medium. No, got in. Got in. I got in. Okay, I'm going backward. Okay. What we want is students who have a really positive attitude to learning languages, and if they don't enjoy their Key Stage 3 experience, then when they've got a negative attitude, they also won't opt for it at Key Stage 4. And by the time they enter Year 10, by the time they're 15, we want them to feel confident about their abilities in the target language. I really like uh, German and French. Um, German more because it's a business language, so I thought it would be more useful in their life. And like you learn more about your own language, don't you? Because like, you compare them all the time. Uh, you kind of notice the similarities between the two languages. A key factor in the department's success has been the team's commitment to working closely together on exam preparation and meeting regularly to discuss every aspect of their teaching. What do you want your kids to actually have to say? Because they look at it and all it says is hotel, question mark, well they don't know what that translates into, what they should do with it. I always tell them to look at the English uh, description at the top mm. because that basically tells them a lot of what they need to include. I get them yeah. to learn how to spell their surname as yeah. well. I mean, that's one that you can pre-prepare them for. For the upward trend in results to continue, everyone's determined that nothing will be left to chance. I think it's about working as a team, it's sharing good practice, and I think it's undoubtedly ensuring that students know what the exam entails and making sure that you communicate that to them, not assuming that they are automatically going to pick it up along the way.